Hey, Zuderug here. Today I'll be looking at Voyager Class Smokescreen from Transformers Alternators. So to start things off, here's his size compared to a soda can. Basically what you'd expect from a Voyager. Moving on. Now as far as colors are concerned, they're interesting. They're certainly not what I would expect for sort of standard smokescreen colors. He's primarily blue with numerous other colors, though primarily a very vibrant green, white, and red, along with a lighter blue, translucent red, some silver, some basic clear blue, and a few other colors sort of just smattered around. As a view from above and below. One thing I like about this figure is a lot of the robot bits are, relatively speaking, hidden well. I mean, yeah, these kind of look like legs and the hands are just hanging out there, but that's about it. Everything else is pretty clean. Even on the inside, he doesn't really look that bad. I mean, there's some junk back there, but he's a racing car. They're sort of expected to have random crap everywhere. Uh, he rolls very well on rubber tires. And thankfully mine haven't worn down yet, so they still roll very nicely. Um, and as is usual for the alternator's line, he can open all his doors and stuff. Uh, the front door can open all the way, and in there you can see... I mean, he's got the dashboard, the control panel, there's even... Um, it's really hard to see, but there's even some molded detail of the uh, sort of touch screen and everything right in the middle there. I believe even the glove box is shown. Uh, both doors can open. The side view mirrors are just painted in silver. The back doors can open as well. And the doors are also very well detailed as well. Although getting the back doors closed can be a bit of a pain with the way everything wants to just sort of collapse. Come on. Oh, and the seats can also move forward, but that's more for transformation. The trunk can open, although you've just got big black panels in there. And of course, the hood can open. But as you can see, there's nothing in there right now. That's where this comes in. It's his gun in robot mode, but in vehicle mode, it serves as his engine block. There are just these posts on either side. Then go into either of the ports there. I like to put it in like this, with this port going, or this post going onto this port. Let's see if I can get everything lined up. Boy, hell if I show this to you on camera. But there he is with that in there. Looks very nice. And there's even some detail in there as well, just along the sides there. Windshield wipers. Oh, and one other detail that's par for the course with alternators is the actual turning wheels. This little crossbar in the middle helps both wheels turn at the same time. So, you know, you can get him going like that, and he will actually, you know, make turns as he drives, which is neat. And one last thing I like is that the Human Alliance figures from the Revenge of the Fallen Human Alliance series can actually fit in here. They're not designed for this for these for this line, but they still work. Now for the fun part, when dealing with an alternator, the transformation. First thing to do, just to make life easier, is get the engine out of there. Push my backdrop back. So just collapse that down. 
And now we can officially get started. So first thing you want to do is open up these two front doors like that. I want to tilt the camera up just a tad. After that, take the roof of the car and it just pegs in these two posts and the ports in there and just get those separated. Take this entire section and get it off the series of pad, uh, tabs. Oh, these two in the front will sort of undo themselves. Just get them off of there. Bring these down and out of the way. Split the back of the car. Extend all of this back and back. Take the rear bumper, pull it down on this double hinge and forward, down and forward. Then just bring all of this up. Everything should go into place. So down, forward, like that. Just got to make sure everything is lined up properly. Something isn't lining up. Anyway, he then has heel spurs that you can fold out here. Although, unless you get them exactly right, they don't really do a whole lot of anything. And then take the rear doors and collapse them in. And just sort of get his legs into something vaguely resembling a standing position. Okay, the problem I had is this bottom section of the joint here is really, really tight on mine. And so you really have to force it to get it to stand all the way up, and if you don't, nothing lines up properly. So just keep that in mind. Anyway, come back up here, bring this section down, bring the legs up and around, turn the crotch around. Now, take the lower seat section, bring it in, collapse this panel to the side, fold it in, tap it together, collapse the seats up, and then there are two posts that will go into ports in here. However, the connection is not the best. They do sit in there as needed, but if you just breathe at them wrong, they have the potential to come out. So, I mean, there it is. <sighs> now, for the upper body. Get this up a little bit more. Grab the arms in here. Just sort of wrench them out. Get them tilted up and bring them around turn them like this. There is a slanted section here on the actual hinge part. You want to line that up with the slanted part on there, bring the wheel down, you want to do it like this so that this little armature can clear this gap here. Like that. You have it around like this, that armature isn't going anywhere. It has to be like this. So you can turn it around, then straighten the arm out, get it down like this. Same thing on this side. Wrench it, bring it out, bring it up, straighten it out, get all that taken care of. Make sure the arms are out to the side. Bring this bar with the head down. Helps if you tilt the head back up. Bring this entire section down. 
get this down and out of the way. Bring this down, and the head should clear this gap. And that will just lock into place. Last thing you want to do is take the steering wheel, fold it all the way under, take this roof panel, bring it in, bring it down, and then just sort of orient underneath everything so that he stands properly. And there you have alternator smoke screen in robot mode. Here's his size to a soda can. About one and a third times the size of it. Uh, one thing I want to show off real quick before we get too far into it is the details on that uh, console there. My camera will focus. Come on. Uh, you can see most of it there. Gives you a good idea of what it looked like. As for colors, they're essentially the same, just with a few other colors to break them up. Mostly blue, with a smattering of, with a lot, actually, of that vibrant green. Uh, medium blue, white, red, black, silver, and now a little bit of gold as well as a very light gray added into the mix to just change everything up a little. View from above, view from below. <clears throat> as for posability, it's actually pretty good. It's a shame that it seems that between this and then, I believe it was this and then Cybertron, or is it Cybertron and then this? Whatever. They lost the sense of posability. Moving on. His head is on a ball joint. It can move all the way up. Can't really move down. Can turn all the way around. And you even get a little bit of tilting. Arms, they can't really go out. I mean, you can use that joint, but if you actually want to get his arms to go up, you have to get them up so that you can get this apparatus beyond that joint there. You can get the arm all the way out and even get it to go all the way up like that. But the arm can go all the way around at the shoulder if you get this wing out of the way. <clears throat> The arms can bend all the way up, which is very nice. The hands are on a ball joint, so they can move side to side, in, swivel, and they can be pulled out, so you can get a wider range of motion. And the fingers, not the thumb, but the fingers are, are articulated. The trigger finger is on its own hinge, and these fingers are fused, so you can get some basic pointing action, but that's about it. Waist is on a swivel. It'll go all the way around if you get stuff out of the way. Legs will go forward that far, back that far. You're not really going to get that much side to side, and due to it being a ball joint, you can get a little bit of swivel. Legs can bend that much at the knee. And then the foot, I don't even know where to begin with this mess. And you can sort of take the toe here and wiggle it up, and but I don't really know where to say the ankle begins. Down here? Up here? Huh? I mean, depending on the joint you use, you can't really make it go forward at all. You can kind of get it to go back like that, but it's kind of it. You can wiggle the heel spur, I guess. Yeah, the posability is pretty good. It's just really weird. Anyway, of course, as I mentioned before, he still has his accessory, the engine block in vehicle mode. Nice embossed Autobot symbol on both sides. This little bit of square texturing. 
get it from engine block mode to gun mode, just fold the barrel out, and this little tab goes into this notch here. And then on the inside of his hand, he has ports right there that these posts go into. So just get that in there, close his hand up around it, and that's not going anywhere. That's a very secure fit. And you can get some pretty good poses, although I have to admit the gun looks a little dinky. Of course, it has posts on both sides, so you can put it into either hand. Now, <clears throat> technically, there isn't any storage for the gun, aside from putting it in his hand. But those ports from his vehicle mode to put it into the engine compartment are still available. So you can take that post and put it into the port here. And sort of store it like that, I guess. Maybe put it like this so it looks a little less freaky, but then if you bend the arm, it gets like that, and there's just not any real good place to store this. Now, I know I've been kind of griping on this figure, but it's not a bad figure. I actually really like it. I really like pretty much all of the alternators. They're just... It's just a really neat concept for a transformer that goes from a pretty much fully functional robot. I mean, he does everything you you would want out of a robot and just does it pretty well, I'd say. But can go from that to a near perfect vehicular replica. He, I mean, he's got the trunk, he's got the doors, the uh turning wheels, the hood which can actually still open in robot mode funnily enough the engine block, and it's even got a pretty much fully detailed interior. However, of course, some things had to be sacrificed for the fact that this thing goes from a robot to a pseudo-replica car. So as a result, you get some really weird things, like these not-feet-feet, feet, and this absurdly huge monoboob car front thing. Well, I guess that's not really that unusual for Transformers. It's kind of been there since the beginning, but still, it looks weird. I like this little flap the head comes out of, though. That's kind of neat. kind of wish he was in actual smokescreen colors, but I mean, beggars can't be choosers. That being said... That pretty much does it for my review of Voyager Class Alternator's Smokescreen. So, until next time, bye-bye.